So I've got a little vegetable shortening and I'm using my paddle that I'm gonna just kind of let that sort of get nice and soft. And then I've got some brown sugar and I've got some eggs. The eggs obviously will be for creaming that once I add the sugar into the shortening or if I had butter, it'd be the same thing. Then on a little baking paper, I wanna sift some dry ingredients. I've got some regular all purpose flour. I've got some baking powder, which is gonna kinda of make it poofy a little bit. A little baking soda. Baking soda is generally used for retarding it a little bit more. And that's so that you can eat it the next day as well. It's generally when baking soda is used in there. Gonna add some cinnamon in here. Love that cinnamon stuff. Then I have a little ginger. Unlike Mary Ann, this is just ginger. <laughs> now, you see why you sift things? You see those little kind of, it's just because of the temperature. So what you can do is you just flatten them out like that, either with a spoon or with your hand, and then you don't have those lumps. Then I have a little bit of salt as well that I'm gonna put in there. Very simple. One ingredient left. And uh, got some nutmeg. Try to use fresh nutmeg if you can. You'll get the maximum flavor. You know, they come with this little gadget like this. You know, it's, it's like its own little house. And then you can take it out of the house like that, you know. And then you just kind of, it's a big, big difference when you use fresh grated nutmeg like this. And you don't need a lot of it. Then you can put it back in the house and forget about it. All right, now that this is soft, I'm gonna add the brown sugar in here now. Then we're gonna bring that together. You wanna preheat your oven about 350 degrees, okay? 350, 360, you wanna preheat your oven. You should do it in the middle of the oven on the rack, of course. Then, once the sugar mixes in with the shortening, I'm gonna add the eggs, one egg at a time. Pretty simple, huh? Then I've got a one pound pan that I just lightly buttered, or you could use shortening, I like to use butter. Not too heavy. Now we're ready to put the cake batter together. We've got that working. Now here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna turn the machine off, because I like these guys over here. And then use my baking paper like this. Kind of just bring this over to the mixing bowl. Nice and neat. We'll add that in there. Keep this, of course. Then, I've got buttermilk. I've got a couple of cups of pumpkin meat. Okay, so now what we're gonna do, we'll mix those ingredients in. Start working them in there. Turn the machine off. Now what we're going to do is this. We're going to add our pumpkin meat. You could use sweet potatoes too if you couldn't find pumpkin. Sweet potatoes would be good with this too. Then, going to add the machine on. Mix the pumpkin flesh in there. Slowly add our buttermilk. You should smell how this smells already. Now, before we finish this, very important. You wanna take your spatula like this and scrape down the sides to make sure that everything is incorporated, okay? Which means that everything's mixed up at one shot. Great thing to do with the family. Now we'll finish it, very simple. Make sure the batter's all nice and smooth. Oven's on 350. Right at the end, we'll take a little bit of pecans, add some pecans in there. Oh yeah, babe. Now we're ready to go. Now we're ready to do business here. Now, we'll take our filling like this, put it inside of our greased or buttered loaf pan. This is 
it's going to bake for about 55 minutes to an hour. Okay? Don't be sticking any, like, toothpicks in it. Yeah, what did it do to you? Okay? Now, put it right inside, middle of the oven, 350, 55 minutes to an hour. And take a knife and just go along the side, gingerly, okay? Then what you want to do after it cools, you want to be able to take it out of this loaf pan like such. And then as I said, as it cools, use a serrated knife. What I like to do is kind of just cut with the serrated knife a little bit of the end piece off, okay? Because the end piece during the baking like that, it gets a little, which I love. You can see all the pecans in there as well. But you want to talk about kicking it up for the kids? Watch this. Generally what I do is I take about a piece about, oh, an inch or so. You see that? And you can keep it whole if you want, or you can cut it in half. You see that? Then what I do is I take cream cheese and I sweeten it to the sweetness that you like. Maybe a little bit of vanilla. Then, if you have these seeds, you can do that, that's fine. If you go to a store and buy pumpkin seeds, don't get a lawn that they look like this, you see? Because basically what the difference is, these still have the outer shells. These have been shelled, okay? So either one, it doesn't matter. I'd like to take these pumpkin seeds, mix them in, the sweetened cream cheese, a little vanilla, and confectionery sugar. Then you take this, right? Add a little bit like that. And you make a little sandwich, you see, kind of like this.